to introduce professor divakar shukla he is professor and has more than two decades of experience in the fields of social and brand communication new media technologies and corporate social responsibility with various premier organizations like world bank netherland embassy along with over 14 years at world's largest communication organization ajlu he works he brings with him a deep understanding of the behavior and mindsets of communities and consumers especially across asian and indian cultures and the application of the same in the field of social and brand management he is also an advisor with various organizations ngos and projects on issues related to social impact planning digital advocacy csr brand management and research a tedx speaker he has mentored student as a guest faculty at premier management institution he also sits on the board of a couple of well known ngos in india he is also a member of the core team by unicef currently he is the professor and dean of jagran school of journalism and communication and jagran school of visual arts and design at jlu as well as the director advancement and international affairs at jagran lake city university bhopal he teaches communication for development consumer behavior development journalism advertise advertising and digital storytelling so this was a brief introduction of divakar sir so now i would like divakar sir to please take this opportunity to enlighten my children and to guide them for their future perspectives okay thank you so much karima for for these uh, you know interesting words and uh, you know uh, i don't know how many of you are there on on the morning of wednesday Uh, you know, attached to your laptops and computers, and 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 being part of this particular uh, session on advertising and brands as careers. Uh, I know for sure that you know, as as Jagran Lake City University, different uh, professors and 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 uh, academicians are taking those sessions on different disciplines altogether, and all of them are very very interesting. Which means that all of you, maybe uh, uh, as I know from standard nine, ten, eleven, twelve. all of you are getting a sense of different disciplines and uh, different career choices that you can make right uh, i just want to say one thing up front for all of you is that i firmly believe and and if you ask any of your seniors you ask your teachers you ask any of the professors or or, or professionals that jagran lake city university has uh, you know you can be successful in any discipline any career one thing has to be there as you start choosing your career choice uh, making making your career choices is that you need to have a conviction of what you want to do uh, at standard 12th 11th uh, all of us are confused even i was confused when i was in 11th uh, i had no clue where exactly i'm going to go eventually in my career and over the last about 25 years or so uh, i have traversed different uh, areas different careers uh, but there have been certain uniformity to what i wanted to do and it has been communication so i think at the stage that we are in today after psychology design journalism i know about uh, maybe uh, uh, i know for sure humanities many of the subjects which you have already gone through today i thought that i should tell you something about advertising and brands uh, i don't know how many of you uh, really know what advertising and brands are but i know one for thing for sure when you go to uh, do some shopping Um, either with your friends all alone or with your families all of you are very interested in in buying the stuff which which you are attached to so i'm pretty sure if you go to uh, say in dv mall in bhopal uh, and you have two shops side by side you would look at two shops and uh, then you say you want to select a top or you want to select a t-shirt now if both the shops have same quality of t-shirt maybe the same color as well but the difference is that one of the t-shirts is maybe from nike or raditas the other t-shirt brand is maybe a local brand or maybe unbranded as well on on top of the t-shirt eventually in your heart and your mind you eventually drift towards the t-shirt which has a nike or a adidas logo on it uh, now that does not necessarily show that the quality is the best that's not the point the point is that in our heads we immediately get attached to the brands the kind of you know imagery that we create for that particular t-shirt so suddenly we get attached to it and we start drifting towards that particular purchase or starting to tell 
uh, yourself okay i want to buy this at that t-shirt so these are these are things which are not just a promotional thing these are things which are not just related to somebody promoting a t-shirt it is all related to our brains in brains function the way that what when you grow up and you maybe go to the you learn about it it is all about persuasion you know when i want to persuade you on something when your mom wants to persuade you to eat some good fresh homely cooked food she uses and as you're younger she uses more she tells you many stories and many ways of of asking you to eat home cooked food rather than going and having burgers and and different uh, you know junk food as we call it so these are different traits and different styles of persuasion which we all use in our daily lives we don't realize that we are using persuasion but that's innate quality of human beings that's what you know evolution has taught us and the way that we have been groomed so advertising is a very broad field uh, advertising and brands as of now comes in a larger career choices what we call as a creative careers and and let me just tell you up front i know that that is there somewhere in my slide as well today and i'm talking about maybe a year back data across the world the entire creative industries which includes advertising public relations design new media you know films various kinds of you know audio and and multimedia they all generate a revenue of almost 90.5 billion pounds i mean i don't even know how to convert that into indian rupees and so there will be so many zeros which will come now if these industries advertising creative industries are generating 90.5 billion pounds per year income which means this sector is a huge sector it is growing uh, somebody was asking me a day back uh, you know one of the students actually so what is going to happen post covid which are the sector which are going to grow which are the areas that i need to do my post graduation in i know for sure i mean everything would come back to to some sense of being on track that is for sure but i know for sure that technology and creativity these two areas broadly are going to grow even further and i for the sake of understanding i am including digital communications as a part of creative careers for now although it is slightly different but still so i want to tell you something about advertising uh, and of course post this session maybe later point of time i am more than happy to reach and 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 receive any of your questions to your teachers and answer you on the mail itself now my starting point obviously is often uh, and you all would have studied in your in your in your history and 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 various other subjects how the humans have evolved you know thousands and thousands of years ago and and many of i mean obviously most of you are from bhopal or, or are based in bhopal uh, you would understand that we have these bhimbetka caves closer to bhopal what are these they are prehistoric you know so heritage sites but the important point to notice is that as humans we have always been storytellers we have always been telling things in a different ways the way that we express so initially prehistoric man used to draw on the walls of the caves and tell the story about the daily lives about the wishes about ambitions about relationships about so many things and also tell the world who they were as a part of a community so from the day of cave paintings when the humans innately started drawing on the walls by using local colors and local stuff we reached to the point whereby we have reached the age where we are constantly connected on the internet we are constantly connected on the whatsapp we constantly connected on social media from digital technology artificial intelligence virtual reality i mean you talk about it our brains are constantly connected so if you if you honestly look at yourself and i'm not just talking about the young students or anybody all of us including me we are all constantly bouncing off in our heads to understand okay what's the latest coming on the facebook what's the latest video which has come up on some particular site on our on a mobile phones so there is a clutter of information but at the same time technology is making us even more 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 informed but i think there's a risk in that more informed you become you start becoming very stereotyped you start becoming very cluttered in your head so the challenge for all of us as as humans is is to unclutter yourself and start understanding what is that really is a critical information now from this point i'll tell you what happens in advertising so advertising essentially is nothing else but trying to persuade someone to a paid way and convincing the other person in a mass media way of buying something of changing behavior 
or telling them to act in a particular way. When you do that, and if I do that with you, and I'm paid to do that, that becomes a part of advertising. And I'll simplify it further for you. It's a paid non-personal communication form, right? So there is, I mean, as, as when you come to the university, you realize there are different, different streets. People you would have heard of term called public relations. Public relations often is paid. Many times it is unpaid as well. But advertising primarily for understanding sake, you need to understand that if you pay someone to promote something in a, in a non-personal form, in a mass communication form, no, non-personal form means that I put a com advertisement on a, in a newspaper, which goes to thousands and thousands of people. And I pay for that particular advertisement in a newspaper. So then in Jagan, then in Bhaskar, Times so they would not put your advertisements in the newspapers until unless you pay them, right? But it goes to thousands of people, lakhs of people rather. So there is a paid form of communication, which essentially is advertising for you to understand as of now. Obviously behind this particular paid form is that there is a person promoting it. Number two, the person or an organization or a brand is persuading you or influencing you to buy something or to change your behavior or to try something. If you do that, it comes as a broader area of what you call as advertising in a, in a, in a larger, right? It's everywhere, if you see. Everywhere, advertising is everywhere, in good way, in a very, very bad way. But the fact is, it's huge. It's a huge industry and you need a high, high end, extremely professional, very well-educated set of professionals who come to this particular sector, right? This word ad advertising comes actually from a Latin word, which is advertia, which means to turn the minds off towards. Now understand what it is trying to say. It says that if I influence your mind to do something in a particular way, the way that I want, that is what advertia was all about. So in any case, as I said it, it is idea is to influence you to behave in a particular way, to buy something in a particular way, to buy an Adidas rather than a non-branded t-shirt. So if I do that, that becomes, that forms a part of the advertising, right? Obviously, uh, you know, there are two views to it. Many people have talked about that advertising increases the price of the products and everything. But the fact is, if you don't have any advertising, how do you know how the consumers and people would know about what is available in the marketplace, what is available where, what to refer to. For any of the manufacturers, service providers, you know, a, a set of producers, how do I ensure that whatever I produce, if I produce a cell phone, how is it going to be uh, increase its sales? How is it going that people are going to purchase it? Until unless I tell them about, okay, I have created a cell phone, this is what the cell phone is all about, and this is a good cell phone. If, and if that is the case, only then people would buy it maybe or try it. But if I have no advertising, if I have no way of communicating to the world how, that I have a cell phone which is unique, how would people buy it? Secondly, more important from a society perspective, I will look at it. We always talk of careers which have a high impact. And I was telling somebody, I said that you get into a career which should be high impacting. If you're in high impacting career, then there is a high chance that you will be very happy. You will be paid very well and you will have a great impact on the society and on the life. Advertising the same way does a very, very big task as well. It gives people a chance to know what is the choice. If you don't even know what is a choice, how do you decide what to do, what not to do? So it helps the society understanding choice and everything which is available. And also, advertising used in a social communication perspective can be a great behavioral change, you know, to discipline. So if you talk about child labor, I can create advertising and there have been some brilliant campaigns world over which have talked about why you should not be purchasing things which have been created by children, which is like child labor as we talk about. We talk about family planning, we talk about smoking. Right now we're going through COVID-19, right? Everybody's aware of what, how does it spread? What happens? How do kids stay safe? The fact is there has been a huge amount of advertising and communications around it. So it's very important from the society perspective also. I'm not dwell too much into it, but you have to understand advertising has a supremely rich history. Starting from 1441, you know, when, when the first printing press came into being from that age, right down to today, when the advertising has really become extremely refined today. So there have been different stages in history of advertising, how it has grown. And interestingly, I often find it, if you study the history and evolution of advertising, 
believe me you'll understand everything about the history of the world how advertising was being done if you see during say world war ii if you see it and analyze it carefully you'll understand what the society was like then you'll understand what the dynamics of the world was like then. you'll understand how the economy of the world was like then. so advertising is a great reflection of how the society was and the world was when that particular time was happening so i always see uh, you know evolution of advertising and history of advertising in a very very different way it tells you about the world as well not please understand why i'm telling you all these things is is to give you a sense of the advertising is not just about creating a tv commercial and seeing it on the tv it's a highly intellectual area of studies that's why in the undergraduate programs a lot of students uh, come for the mass communication and advertising programs because it helps you to understand lots of things and build creative careers right i i i know that today i can show you some of the videos but i know for sure that you will not be able to hear the videos is like i am skipping some of those uh, you know uh, videos because i don't think you will be able to hear them so i'll show you some videos definitely for sure even without uh, the sound but you you will understand that right you see all this everybody i mean where do the flags come from flags are not just something that you are proud of flags are also an identity of that particular country i mean the tricolor for us as indians is a identity you, you invest you you totally attached to that particular tricolor that's an identity same way if you look at nike nike has a swoosh right adidas has those three lines now what is all that that is an identity that tells you what the brand is all about and what it is all about right i'll show you a couple of things because i talked about the the brand identity i talked about the identity of something now you 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 relate to these particular things so look at disney disney walt disney if i tell all of you individually and and you can think about it right now if i tell you what does con what comes to your mind when i tell you walt disney majority of you would say oh it means disneyland you say it means disney channel it means disney movies so there's a huge amount of association which you get when you when you when you hear the term disney or walt disney cartoons isn't it true where does it come from how is it that you are the moment i say walt disney you say oh cartoons or you may think oh, walt disney disney movies or you say disneyland why is it happening it is happening because over the period of time walt disney as a organization as a brand have created that particular persona they have created that particular thing if you look at it today disney is all about family it is all about being magic it is all about enjoyment it is all about purity of things if you look at it isn't it true so you don't go go to disneyland all alone you go with your families there's always a vacation people take in the world we go to let's go to disneyland but it's a family vacation rarely people go i went to disneyland all alone it never happens when you see a disney movie it's a family thing you know you mom dad family grandmother grandmoms siblings everybody sits together and maybe watches it and they all relate to it so disney has created that purity of 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 an organization and it is all about advertising how it has been built up and it's a big big area of profession and a huge amounts of money actually look at this this i i know many of you would have seen it in the photographs so or maybe seen it on the roads also this is a vehicle called jeep so jeep essentially is all about adventure that if you look at jeep as, as a vehicle suvs we often call it it's all about adventure about discovery about you know going off the road and doing things and i mean it's often said that jeep goes to places where no no person has ever gone so it goes on the rocks and everything it's adventure thing so jeep has created a persona and identity which is related to being the first the pioneer i mean this is what they have done over the period of time it is all about how advertising has been done how the brand building of jeep has been done over the years and it's a very very well planned way in which it is done it is always often said that advertising is sitting on the cusp of science and arts it's not that simple as it appears to be it is all crafted it is all planned right i was talking to you about nike nike's tagline is just do it nike what does nike do it's a conqueror if you see any of the tv commercials or advertisements on the net 
of Nike, it will be all about winning, winning, reaching the top, reaching the summit. It's all about that and, and showing performance. So Nike has created that image of being a conqueror. And that's why the moment I tell all of you, go and buy a Nike shoe, you'll immediately associate in your head that Nike means performance. It means achieving something, achieving or conquering something rather, right? And that's a very important piece in which the we people buy things, people relate to it. And as I said right in the beginning, it's all about in the brains. In this particular session, I cannot explain to you how our brains function and how advertising is close to it. It's a part of the neurosciences right now. So a lot of neuroscientists in the world, they are collaborating with advertising professionals. And, uh, and, and, and we are trying to understand how does the brain function. So there's a lot of research happening in advertising and neuroscience together. I have another colleague of mine, Jento, as, as, as Karima Ma'am was saying, he also has been in this particular profession. And, and these are big areas of work and he has built his career around the same things as I was talking about. So there are things which are extremely important when it comes to association. Harley Davidson, many of you know about this motorcycle, Harley Davidson. I don't have a way of interacting with you, but I know for sure the moment I put this particular slide, all of you would have thought, many of you who know about this particular brand and motorcycles, you say, oh wow. So Harley Davidson is not like any other motorcycle. It's a cult. It's, it, it, it has a personality. If you see who are owners of Harley Davidson, uh, Davidson, they're all rebels. They have a different lifestyle. They have long mustaches, they have leather jackets, they have big motorcycles. They don't drive on the roads of Bhopal. They drive on the, from, from Bhopal, they drive down to Indore, from Indore to Jan, from Jan to maybe Bombay. So it's a, it's a brand which talks about a persona. It is about independence. It is about freedom, non-conforming to the status that we have it. Red Bull also is one of the brands in the similar space actually. So it's a, it's a brand which has been built around being out of box being as a variable, right? These are very important things. And if you look at the sales of Harley Davidson in India, it's a very expensive motorcycle, but they have grown and grown and grown. Right now, more in metros of India, but I'm pretty sure that in times to come, it will be available extensively in the smaller towns or the next year towns, right? Pixar, I talk about Walt Disney. What does Pixar mean to you? The moment I say, you say, oh, Pixar movies, Pixar cartoons, they have, they have shaped themselves, they have promoted themselves as wizards, as, as, as who are imaginative, who are, who are unique. Pixar movies are different from Lord Disney movies, by the way. So they have created a, what we call as a niche, a unique area in which you, you work. And please remember students, all this, the careers of advertising involves a lot of creativity and a lot of fun. If you're if you fun loving, if you're an idea person, if you are creative in some sense, creative doesn't mean drawing only, creative means even ideas. If you are excited with what you see around the world, the being curious, that's the area that you need to be, that's a profession that you need to be, that's a, that's a career choice or the, or the degree choice that you need to make, right? Johnson Johnson has always been a protector. The moment I say Johnson Johnson, baby Johnson, baby soap, we get into a situation whereby you have a, you have a, you have what you call as, as antiseptic creams, you have band-aids, so Johnson is Johnson all about protecting. They have created that persona around Johnson Johnson. So people, the consumers, communities relate. Johnson Johnson is all about caring. And that's a very important thing because when you go to the market, when you see a world Johnson Johnson, your mind says, oh, this should be a good brand. This should be a good product. Let me buy Johnson Johnson rather than something else which has no association with me. And that is the game name of the game, right? Lego, all of you would have, uh, I'm pretty sure that many of you, in fact, even now I do it, frankly. So it's not about being a child. It is all about having that imaginary quality. Lego is all about constructing things from nowhere. You have blocks, you imagine things and you create it out of those things. So Lego has created its persona, its own profile around being imaginary. You imagine and you engineer things, right? So creativity and technology in a, in a, in a, in a, in a lighter sense. These are very important pieces again, let me tell you. I would not uh, dwell too much, but I do want to tell you something about it before we move on to the last bit of my presentation. You know, there are always a situation, if you look at it, where old things go away 
right? And new things come. In the area of advertising, everybody is trying to be a champion. Everyone is trying to be champion. So, for example, if some of you are working on a particular brand in a particular communication organization after your say degree programs, you go and join, say, if you join Apple, right? If you join Apple, and I, as an advertising professional, goes and joins Samsung. What would we be doing to each other? I would be trying to promote Samsung, whereas you would be trying to promote Apple. So everybody is trying to outmaneuver the other person. And there's always a time that there is a number one brand in the marketplace. Coca-Cola becomes the champion brand or the bigger brand. But Pepsi is following it very closely. So Pepsi is trying to do things which Coca-Cola cannot do, number one. Number two, Pepsi is trying to do things to dislodge Coca-Cola as the number one Coca, I mean, as a num number one beverage in the market. So there's always a competition happening in the market between brands. Who is creating this competition? Who's creating the communication around the competition? It's the advertising professionals. They create a persona, as I said, right? So Pepsi is more of a choice of the new generation, as you know. Coca-Cola is all about everybody consumes it. It's more of a family thing. So there, there's a difference, right? You will relate to Levi's. Levi's has always been number one brand in the world. But Diesel is another brand in the jeans spacing who have been who have been challenging Levi's on very ways. How? Diesel brought color jeans. If I tell you the jeans, jeans are always blue, right? But Diesel came up by bringing in color jeans. There are some other brands also who did it, but Diesel was one of the key ones, right? I'll tell you about another thing which many of you would relate to. Look at these test matches. Test matches in cricket have always been there, isn't it true? But then there was a point of time when many of you would not have been born by then, when the one day matches came into being. One day matches came, everybody stopped looking at test matches. Most of the people were only watching one days. Because it was a new format, there was excitement around it, there was a colored clothing. Whereas test matches all about five days of cricket, white clothing, everything else, it became dull. One day became exciting. Everybody was all after exciting. So the challenger was one days, one day matches, and the champion obviously earlier was test matches. But who's the challenger today to one day matches? T20. Isn't T20 later on it came? 2020 matches became the challenger to one day matches. So one day matches who were becoming champions as a key matches certainly were felt threatened by T20 matches. So a new brand came into being certainly. There are people who are talking about six overs matches now as well. So there's a constantly, you know, churning of thoughts and communication and brands and position happening in the marketplace. And this is a very important thing because who does it? It is again communication professionals. And they're highly paid in different different organizations. And I'll come to it later. I'll skip all this because I think uh, I cannot show you the examples. So I'll just move. Give me a second. So it's very important for you to understand uh, how, so there are two aspects to it you should understand as you decide on a careers. Uh, in advertising, it is very, very important to understand for whom you are creating communication. Even now in your, in your schools, I'm pretty sure when you're making presentations, when you're doing a viva, when your teachers give you assignments, what do you do? When you're making a presentation in front of the panel of teachers, you keep in mind, who are those people who are sitting in front of you? Are they science teachers? Are they civics teachers? Are they history teachers? Who are you communicating to? It is very important. In the same way in advertising, you need to understand very clearly who are your consumers. If your consumers are of a typical type, of a particular way, you create communication related to that so that there is an impact. I'll show you a commercial, an ad. Obviously, it does not have a voice out here for you, but you'll relate to it. It is for Argentina Airlines. Argentina Airlines, essentially, I'll give you the background to it. They essentially wanted, uh, they wanted to tell the world that Argentina Airlines is, is very, very deadline oriented. It is very punctual. The flights start at, at a point of time and reach at a particular destination or point of time because you know often the flights get delayed. So Argentina Airlines said, if we tell the world that we are very, very deadline oriented, very punctual, people would relate to us and they fly on Argentina Airlines. But look how beautifully they merged a child psychology, a children's psychology into a brand 
understanding and just see if you can understand what it is. Chicos, estos señores dicen que ustedes tienen una alta en avión. Matías, ese avión tiene que estar en Roma a las 10.35. Hay mucha gente que necesita viajar. Hay mucha gente que está esperando. Todos necesitan que se oye. Y si sabes los que creen tienen más razón que los que no creen, en Aerolíneas Argentinas creímos que se podía hacer una aerolínea distinta y la hicimos. Estamos haciendo el viaje más importante. So look at how beautifully they did it. They created what we often do as kids. Um, you know, these kids actually brought a box and when the because the flight flies every day on the same time over there on the, over their school and the shadow falls on the floor. They actually thought this is how the children imagine, right? They got the box open. Obviously, the shadow would go inside, right? Because the flight has already gone. And they thought they have captured the plane. Next day, the pilots come and the pilots say, please release, open the box so that flights can go ahead because we have to reach on that particular point of time. It's so beautifully crafted. Can you imagine being professionals in the space where your creativity, your ideas can make a big impact, whether it is for commercial purposes or for social reasons as well. That's why this, this, this area or the profession excites everyone. And there are lots and lots of bright students who come in this particular profession. Um, since, as I said at the beginning, it is very, very high paying area. And, 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 it's, and this is not a frivolous, it's a highly intellectual area that people you know, work in. Um, I would show you another couple of ones. Uh, even if we don't have our audio, uh, let me just show it to you. Sorry. So look at how beautifully they've done it. They've got this center shock chewing gum and the tagline says So the person wants to have a haircut, which is pretty, pretty, you know, kind of, you know, crazy. So the barber actually does nothing but gives him the center shock. Now this, I know it does not happen this way, but the fact is that advertising is all about bringing in the key communication message, which you want to give it to the audiences. And how you want to present it through TV commercials, to drawing, to music, to jingles, to different strategic communication which you do, eventually at the end of it, you are able to you know, kind of get successful. 
so so the different ways so as i said one aspect is the creative part the second aspect is to understand the consumers and audiences very well once you are able to do that research part of it and get everything in place what you do is to take all those ideas those things into it and you craft it into an advertising strategy into how you're going to communicate to the world and then what are the platforms are you going to create television commercials around it or are you going to create uh, outdoors communication or are you going to create a lot of audio and text messages around it so what platforms you want to use is dependent on what you want to do but more important the basics of it is how much you really understand who you are communicating to and i think advertising that way becomes extremely creative is because it deploys a lot of uh, you know visuals into it a lot of sounds into into advertising whether it is commercials tv or it is radio or anything else so i think that is the important piece that you need to understand uh, where does it take you as a career choice i mean if you do say for example if you do bachelors of mass communication uh, journalism and mass communication and you focus on advertising then definitely there is a chance and and of course it needs a lot of studies as well a lot of practice and a lot of creative um, ideations as well you get being a market analyst or you become a market researcher as often people call it you get into promotions and different kind of related jobs in that space a lot of people actually also specialize in public relations but i know a lot of people from advertising become public relations head of uh, public relations directors and all that obviously advertising managers advertising heads presidents advertising everything comes into play and also the brand managers uh, brand manager the moment you get into advertising you also need to have a lot of qualifications when it comes to managing a brand but brand manager there are lots of people from the advertising area who have gone on and they are brand managers and and, and could be any companies that you can look for uh, you know i would just give you three four things quickly and we'll close one of the things is when you're in standard 11th or 12th don't worry about being confused to some extent that's okay as i said all of us are confused at some point of time but don't reframe this indecision which is there in your heads what to do which area to get in turn it into being and tell yourself that you are being open minded you are exploring new things that's why these sessions are happening your principal said that we need to have these sessions for you to understand and many of you would take up journalism many of you would take up advertising many of you would take up maybe psychology or different areas that people would come in the fact of the matter is look at it that at this stage of your lives and careers you need to be open minded look at things which excite you the maximum that's why i was telling about advertising it gives you a lot of happiness when you create new things and sh and and which is impacting right secondly be always be curious i have often seen you know the kids of four years five years six years are very very curious they keep on asking you questions as we grow older we lose this sense of being curious today i am less curious than you guys are but challenge for me is that i need to stay as young as childlike as we say as curious as i was maybe 25 years back so being curious is a great trait in the world that we are living in today and you see the best leaders in the world are always always curious the best professionals rather look for clues so don't see things in larger way okay this is how i see it you see small small patterns and things what is happening people talk about covid 19 what's going to happen look at small things which are happening that's why i said if you look at what is happening is digital is growing phenomenally creativity and technology are coming together so covid 19 will throw up new professions in the space of creative careers digital communication deployments these are clues that you have to look for whether you are a professional or you are a student always take small actions we often wait and say okay i want to become a xyz i'll do this and i'll become that that is never always possible take small actions today when you are in a lockdown situation please start doing small small things i mean as i am telling about advertising go on the net and and see what are the best award winning television commercials which the world is has seen and they are so exciting and every every commercial has a story every commercial has a learning for you when it comes to profession especially in the areas of advertising and we say always take stock of situation look at the big picture zoom out these are the words you will always hear from your teachers zoom outing means is go far and see how the world looks so how do you know that the earth is round until now is going the space right 
So until unless you detach yourself, go farther from what career you're trying to build up and then see from far, you'll see a big picture. You see the context of that particular situation and it's very critical. Believe me, students, even now, many of us in the profession, we still do it. Because if you don't do it, you lose sight of what is happening around you. What we call is a blind sight, correct? You require creative thinking to be advertising professionals. You require what is required to be done in a marketplace. You need to understand consumers very well, right? You need to have degree and professions which has taught you to be communication professionals and marketing professionals. The kind of jobs that advertising, uh, you know, degree programs give it to you, obviously account managers, copywriters, market research executives, account directors, digital assets manager, brand managers, communication strategist, content managers. This is a laundry list of things that advertising profession, professionals, I mean, the degree holders do it at the point of time, even after undergraduation, which is after BA. Many of you, they go on to do the post-graduation. Again, that's another choice. But the fact is, these are the professions uh, that you happen. Where do these jobs come from? Which are the companies in the world or areas in the world which employ advertising professionals? These are some of them I could put. Netflix has, I mean, all of them have teams actually, frankly speaking, and, and big teams, huh? Netflix, Discoveries, Ogilvy is a worldwide creative agency. You have Leo Burnett, you have Lintas, you have Group M's, Unilever is, as you all know, Procter & Gamble, Rolls-Royce, Adidas, Nike, Starbucks. Everybody has big teams of communication professionals. Huge teams, because their brands have been built up based on that. Uh, UNICEF and World Wildlife Fund as well, they have teams which is communication for development at, at JLU. Uh, we, in our, in our BAJMC program, we have a subject called communication for development. It's a highly prized program as, as Garima Ma'am initially said, that uh, we partners to UNICEF are part of a core team and we have built up a, a, a syllabus around communication development which is taught worldwide. And I think JLU's six, uh, seven universities in India which teaches this subject. In Central India, I think Jagung Lake City University is the only university which teaches this subject. And that subject, if you study, and it's a very exciting subject, it takes you on a path towards United Nations and bigger global NGOs. You, you understand what the nuances of using advertising for social changes, right? I told you this about it. I always say in the end that who is going to join these particular professions is tell us yourself. Are you curious about things? Are you interested about various things around you? Or are you just single minded? Okay, I just need, I'm interested in nothing else. Second is, do you love ideas? You come up with ideas, wacky ideas, new ideas, and related to the profession. Ideas are not like just I'm thinking, uh, you know, sitting at home and doing nothing about it. Ideas are when they are deployable, when you can execute those ideas, right? Third thing, which is very, very important in the world today, and especially in the areas, pandemic times that we are all in, you need to be solution seeking. Doing something without any impact and solution doesn't make any sense. Whether you're an engineer or you're a doctor or you're a, you're a, you're a medical worker or you're an advertiser or whatever you are, you need to be solution seeking. Because if you are, and if you get into a solution which has a high impact, chances are you'll be paid very well. Nobody wants to pay somebody who does not provide solution, to be very honest. No matter what, how good you are when it comes to academics, you need to be solution seeking. And I think advertising gives you these three things very, very well. Curiosity, your sense of ideas and excitement around ideas, you can come up with anything. And of course, your solution seeking behavior. I would always urge all of you to read a lot. Reading doesn't mean only syllabus and, and, and academic reading. It means read everything. Please watch a lot. It is going to help you in your careers in whichever career that you take. Please watch movies, watch English movies, watch Hindi movies, watch global movies, watch movies in a different language with subtitles and try to connect these things to each other. Highly creative and intellectual professions connect things together. If I read something today in, in say, in, in chemical technology, I may not be a chemical engineer, but I can relate chemical technology to dry cleaning and dry cleaning to maybe photography. Isn't it true? You try to do it once, you'll, you'll see connections happening between sectors and everything. Last in the least part of it I can again re-emphasize is please earn a good degree you know we often miss the point and I have often heard people say degree se kya hoga? Koi bhi kahin pe bhi kar lo. it's not like it when you get into a profession you realize how a good degree from a good university makes sense 
and I'm not at all saying that Jagan Lake City University happens to be the only university. No, there are globally best universities across the world. Nobody's stopping you from anywhere. But I always feel, and, and, and let me tell you, when I came to Bhopal, I realized how important and how unique this university was because all of us, and, and you have three of us here, uh, me and Jento sir, as well as Pramod sir, why do we tell and reach out to the students is to tell them what we are and what do we do? It's not like any other university who just runs and runs and runs. The fact is that we provide a value to the students and we invest in them. So earning a degree in advertising, I mean, something what I was talking about that we have a program which is called Bachelor of Journalism and Mass Communication, where in the third year, you specialize in, in, in advertising. And that gives you a great amount of bandwidth and the foundation to launch your careers, right? So please make sure that the world is multimedia. All of you are connected to your mobile phones, on televisions, in newspapers and magazines, internet. The fact is, it's all about how communication is being done, how storytelling is happening. And that's a very, very big area of work in the world and a great profession to be in, honestly speaking. Uh, I know that you had a design program, I mean, as webinar as well. Uh, JLU has some phenomenal media production studios where advertising professionals and journalism professionals do a lot of practice and, and, and work. And I think that's the most exciting part of it, which is important. You have global partners, University of Arts London, the logo which I'm, which is there, is the world's second best creative university. The very old university based in London, they're partners to us and a lot of you know, interactions happen with them. The students work on very projects, earn their degrees and, and they go on to make their careers. Uh, where do they get placed? I showed lots of brands earlier. Many of those brands you'll see reflected here as well. These are global brands in India and internationally. You get placed in that, you do internships. Recently, our industry relations team did a virtual internship fair where so many companies came, which is amazing. In these times when universities are literally, literally, you know, kind of, you know, on the back foot for their students, JLU actually did an internship fair, virtual one, which was pretty phenomenal, right? I think that's important to earn a degree and then get into a great profession. I can